you know, there's a strange thing when characters end in a book or a film or something like that. You wonder what happened to them. And Robert, when Gaz ends at the end of the movie, you're kind of hopeful for him that, you know, he's taken off his clothes and it seems life is on an upward curve for him. And then here we are 30 years later, however long it is, pardon my maths. And it's kind of sad where he's at. I was surprised, you know, he's still lovable, but life hasn't turned out the way it was. And even though there's a lot of hope in the show, there's kind of a melancholy hue, if that's not too pretentious, when it starts. Do you get a sad feeling from him when you got the script? Um, no, I know what you're saying. I, I totally understand what you're saying. But when uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy that he, he is where he is because... Um, 25 years down the line, things have been pretty tough for the whole yeah. country. So there's, there's as in, in the UK, 25 years of conservative rule, 25 years of austerity. It's been pretty tough for these people, pretty tough for their lives. So I think I, when I read the, through the scripts, I thought just about every one of these characters are exactly where I thought they were going to be. Okay. That's stupid. There's nothing Hollywood about it. They haven't no. really done anything daft, you know? Yeah. So, uh, for me, I, I was quite pleased to see him where he was. Okay. And Talitha, your character is brilliant because you're a mini me, except you're a girl in terms of you're exactly like Gaz in that you're making lots of mistakes, but in a way they don't seem your fault because it's life is on you and you have a heart to go, but you're screwing up as well. Or is that a fair assessment of your character? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty spot on. I think she's got the best intentions, but she hasn't probably learned the kind of the right way of dealing with what she's feeling and the right way of getting to what she wants mm. um having watched Gaz and his yeah. kind of chaos and yeah and, and also her mum who's kind of quite absent and she doesn't get on with her mum's boyfriend and she has to look after her twin sisters a lot of the time so I think yeah hope I hope that people will see that deep down inside she is just like a big softy but she kind of has m built up this exterior to get through life yeah, ex exactly like Gaz, I guess. Wim, sorry for keeping you waiting, but that's the nature of a three-person interview. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, did you have any reservations about this? Because I'm sure part of your acting life after the movie was, that's the guy, that's the kid from the Full Monty who watched his dad and his pals strip. And I'm not, I'm actually not trying to be funny, but I'm sure it not haunted you, but you know, that was your calling card for a long time. So I'm wondering, despite how good the script is, did you have any reservations going, do I really want to get back into the Full Monty world? Um, Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That, that did, you know, run through my mind very, very briefly, you know, but mm. the, I am incredibly proud to be part of, that film you know I, I think it, it took me a few years after the film came out to to kind of assess the magnitude of, of of what the film is and how close people have that movie to their heart you know mm -hmm. um so to be part of something like that you, you know you can't help but feel in, incredibly proud so you know and then you know, once we had the convers I had the conversation with Simon and where he was planning Nathan to go, it just felt like such a unique, uh, you know, character to explore. You know, I mean, there's not many actors that have been given the opportunity to be an 11 year old mm. boy, you know, and then nearly 30 years later, you know, look at this character again. And, 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 you know, I'm, it, Full Monty was my first ever acting. Uh, yeah role um and now i've you know I've, I've been very fortunate to have the career that i've had and uh been to drama school and i have a process so you know to be able to to look at this character now in with my adult professional eyes on has, yeah. has, has been a genuine dream yeah i can imagine you know i think you're told not to comment on people's appearances anymore given you know rightly the world we live in but you've aged remarkably well i have to say you can still see that youthful boy in you so do take that as a compliment I robert the kind i will thank you oh, yeah, so, so you should <laughs> on. What, what, listen i was going to get to that there's still time I was just going to say, Robert, I spoke to you in January 2020 for a show called Cobra. Oh, I... And it's very strange. It was about this bizarre event that happened with a solar flare and the world went into chaos. And then lo and behold, 
two months later, the world went into chaos and we all stayed in our house and the world went mad. Were you struck by the irony of that? I don't mean our interview, although no. as ironic as it was, but, and then you, you played it, you played the prime minister in that show. And there were certainly questions about the prime minister of England, how he handled that. But were, were you struck by the irony of life imitating oh, art? For sure. For sure. I mean, um, you know, that the, 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 happened actually in the second series as well. And we're kind of thinking, is it going to happen in the third? Because we've just kind of completed that. Right. Uh, but, but Ben, the writer, it's almost as like he's some kind of seer. <laughs> like he kind of like forecast these things of the like impending doom. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was. We were, we were, we were totally like, did, we were calling each other, myself and Vic Hamilton, and Vic who plays, you know, Anna Marshall in the show. Going, you, you see, it's just happening here. <laughs> it's, just, it's just what we've just done. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, totally, totally struck by um by that. Wonderful. Well, you have to watch what you do in the future. We can predict time. And finally, uh, Talitha, did you and Robert spend a lot of time doing, you know, dad and daughter stuff and preparation? Or did you, I'm always curious about the process, or do you just read your lines and show up? And as Olivia said, it's called acting boy. So we don't need to do any of that stuff. We did have, uh, I think we had like one afternoon of like a chat and a bit of a rehearsal and a conversation. And then we kind of just got on on set and yeah, kind of, yeah, I think it it felt very easy to work with Bobby. Like it, it was just nice and calm, relaxed and, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Wonderful. We were working with Talitha was going to be absolutely easy. You know, there was like there was something incredibly mature about, about our about our, even in our, even in the read through. You think, no, this is going to be absolutely fine, you know, and so it proved. It was fantastic working. Yeah, and Bobby to your friends apparently. So there you go. Listen, yeah. the the show is great. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so congratulations Thank and you. nice to talk to you. Thanks very Thank much. You. Thanks, guys. Mark, if I can start with you, you know, in a way, and I'd love your take on this, you seem like the nicest guy in the cast, the one who's the least messed up by all that's happened in the interceding 25 years. Discuss. <laughs> uh, well, I am absolutely the nicest guy in the cast. Um, I mean your character though he's he's kind oh, of the moral okay. centre I thought yeah sorry <laughs> that's what I meant okay oh well, in that case no I uh, yeah Dave Dave is um, Dave's not not a he's quite taciturn he's not he's not mm. a great talker really uh, certainly not to Gene and that in a way is 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 part of the reason why their relationship is um, is on slightly uh, uneven terrain when mm. we when we re meet them. Yeah, uh, they've had a they've had a a, a, a kind of a, a tragic event within their yeah their family. Uh, they're unable to have uh, kids, and that has not been addressed by them. And I think mm. that is where their relationship is 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 feeling rocky and also that is also the reason when <clears throat> when gaz uh says to dave yeah. what do you know about parenting you, you yeah. haven't got any kids that hits home yeah so that yeah. kind of that puts a bit of a, a a kibosh on gaz and dave's relationship for a little while yeah but having you know they 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 were guys that grew up together from from they'd known each other since they were kids. When it comes to the crunch, they are there for each other. Yeah. But Dave and Jean's relationship does need work. And, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll see where that takes us. Indeed, we shall. And, and Leslie, on that, uh, like their relationship is fascinating. And and as your character Jean, like she loves him, but. She wants more for him and seems annoyed that he doesn't want more for himself, I think. Like she's frustrated. And not that she's without her little crimes, let's call them as any marriage has, I guess. But but she seems frustrated by his lack of ambition for himself. Okay. So well, I would counter that actually. Okay. And say that, you know, the 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 thing is that in the film, they are really they love one another they've got one another's backs you know Mm -hmm. they it's them against the world and then this thing happens where they have a baby and the baby dies and they they don't talk about it either Mm -hmm. of them and her way of dealing with that is to take her life career ambition as far as she possibly can and dave um 
deals with his pain by retreating. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the issue between them is less about whether or not, you know, Dave turns himself into a successful, um, you know, person in a stationary firm or, or, (laughs) uh, you know, becomes a teacher himself or, you know, um, starts working for a pharmaceutical company. And it's more her frustration with him is more to do with the fact that he won't engage, he won't talk. Yeah. And that's the problem that they're in when we pick up at this series is that the tectonic plates in their marriage have moved to a point where if they don't discuss, if they don't roll their sleeves up, both mm-hmm. of them, um, they're in danger of losing everything that was so good about them when they were young. And that, that, I think, is the very common thing that yeah. you find further down the line in marriages is that it's death by a thousand paper cuts rather yeah. than, you know, one big thing. Yeah, yeah. That's a much better way of putting it than I did. Steve, sorry to keep you waiting, but, you know, we have articulate guests, so we have to give them their time. I was just thinking, as as they've alluded to there, there's so much going on in this show. And there's, and I don't want to give a spoiler, but so far we've had no mention of men taking off their clothes. I mean, did you get the script? And kind of breathe a sigh of relief when you saw that it doesn't begin with, you know, you taking your clobber off 25 years later. Or maybe you were disappointed. I don't know. No, no. And it was the first <laughs> question I asked, actually, when Simon rang up and they said, we're thinking of doing this. Would you be interested? I said, oh, what about nudity? He said, uh, don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We're, you know, we respect your age and all that. <laughs> um, but actually, there is some nudity in it. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember the other night. I've not, I've not seen it all yet, but the, there was a, I think it's in... Um, Episode three, I get my kit off. Not all of it, but yeah. yeah. Enough to enough to keep us happy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> speak well, for yourself. Well, you yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mark, we're nearly out of time, but I just I just wondered something that popped into my head this morning about three months after the movie came out. I remember seeing it in a cinema in Dublin. I remember seeing you on a late night talk show. It could have been Conan O'Brien or one of those. And I was like, wow, that's the guy from the full Monty. Was it a mad time when the first film came out? Was it was it a whirlwind? Because it seemed to go global in a way that I don't think people were expecting. It really was a whirlwind. And it actually it opened in America prior to opening in the in the UK okay. and the rest of the world. So yeah. and they and they, they marketed it quite heavily, but then only opened on like two screens in LA and four in New York. So it was so people were queuing around the block to see this thing that they'd heard about. And that word of mouth just generated a, a bigger and bigger audience. And it it just kind of it snowballed uh, in an extraordinary way. And, you know, you, you can you can have a, an entire career waiting for that one thing to happen. Yeah. Um, so for it to happen, you know, back then on what was a lot of our uh, first film uh, ever was was a, a big eye opener and it was, yeah. it was a crazy time but yeah. uh, didn't you, well, you live to tell the tale oh, had, exactly yeah somebody come up to him didn't you in, in america and said thanks for that you, you've liberated the fat american male <laughs> that's, that's wow that. yeah, wow so. that should be on your business cards i should have a medal <laughs> or something sure yeah absolutely well listen lovely to talk to you and continued success one and all thanks a lot thank, thank, thank you very so much, much.